Hi everyone, it's Tim here with the stats update for June 2023. So a quick reminder, my system is a 6.8 kilowatt peak um, east-west split, so 3.4 kilowatts on each side of the house. And we've got 14.7 kilowatt hours of battery. If you want to see all the details of our system, please watch our tour video. I'm going to put that up in the uh, corner there. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the stats. Okay, so in June we generated 877.5 kilowatt hours, very slightly less than what we generated in May, but don't forget there was one extra day in May. So let me just quickly show you what happened in May. We had 891.6 kilowatt hours in May, um, but because there's one less day in uh, June compared to May, actually the average is slightly higher um, per day. Um, but And you can see we uh, maxed out at about just over 40 kilowatt hours on a couple of days, got close on a couple of the others. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. So that was pretty good overall, I would say. Uh, so how do we actually use that at uh, all that power? Well, uh, let me go to the home tab. This is the Give Energy web portal, by the way, just as a reminder. So in total, we consumed 386.5 kilowatt hours for the month of June. And uh, let's compare that to May, where we, gener where we consumed 486.3 kilowatt hours. And you can see the split is roughly the same between between the solar to home, grid to home, and battery to home. Um, all of that grid to home is us um, charging up the battery overnight. So typically what we do is we um, we drain the battery uh, during the peak flux period for, um, between about five and seven in the evening. I've upped that from the um, the one hour or from six till seven that I was doing in May. Um, and I'll show you how, how that's affected the, uh, the, the, the um, savings uh, later on in the video. Um, but uh, what we do then is we charge up the battery back up to about 80% overnight during that um, uh, 2 till 5 p uh, a.m. period uh, and at the same time we also heat our hot water and charge our electric vehicle um, so the reason we do that is to stop the battery basically draining into the into the hot water into the uh, into the EV so by charging the battery at the same time as we're doing those other things we're minimizing the amount of battery that goes into those um, other uh, uses um, so that means that um, our battery is nearly full uh, come the morning and then it gets topped up by the solar and then uh, we're able to then export for the rest of the day. Uh, so yeah, let me show the other tabs and show you what I mean. Oh, actually, before I do that, you can see that um, in the last week of May, we, uh, the last week of June, sorry, we were on holiday. So you can see our, our usage dropped way down. I actually turned off the hot water. Um, I, I'll do an interesting um, comparison on uh, in a different video later uh, about what happened with our hot water because um, uh, I, I left it running for a couple of days just to see what the typical losses were from our hot water cylinder. Um, and uh, I was pleased to see that it was only about 1.1 kilowatt hour per day. So that's that's really interesting. Um, um, but yeah, after that, I switched off the hot water and obviously we weren't charging the EV. So our, our usage dropped way off for the, for the last part of the month. So bear that in mind for the rest of these statistics. Um, so if I then go and show you the uh, the rest of these tabs, um, battery in, you can see uh, the, this big red chunk is um, charging up the battery overnight and the uh, solar to battery is that yellow bit there that's the topping up of the uh, the battery during the day if i compare that to may you can see the um, the proportions have changed slightly because we're um we're actually exporting a little bit more um during the flux peak period which means we need to top up the battery a little bit more in june so you can see that mean that that shows the uh, means that the red block there is bigger than it was in in may in comparison to the to the yellow block um, but that does mean that we also then um, manage to export more from the battery um, which i will then show you in the battery out tab so you can see um, battery to grid this big chunk 188.6 kilowatt hours um, and uh, the um, battery to the home was only uh, 70 kilowatt hours. So if I flip back to, to May, you can see, again, the, portion, the proportion of um, battery to grid is a lot smaller in uh, May compared to June because of that increased um, period of time where we're doing uh, the flux export. Um, and then let's check, just check out what we consumed in terms of the from the grid. You see the grid, uh, we imported 370 kilowatt hours and roughly half of that went to the home and half of that went to the battery. The stuff going into the home, that's almost uh, entirely the hot water and uh, the EV. Um, and if I look at the uh, grid out, you can see we exported um, a very large amount of, uh, of energy, 814 kilowatt hours, of which um, a, a huge chunk was, was solar because we have so much solar generation that a lot of that just went straight out to the grid um, and because not much of it needed to go into the battery. Um, but then, of course, we have this big chunk of um, battery to grid, which is, as I said, during the uh, the flux export period where we force export the battery. And if I compare that to um, to May, you can see we exported a little bit more 
Um, what's that? 750 roughly uh, compared to about 815. So yeah, we're exporting an extra 65 kilowatt hours basically um, in June compared to May. So that's all good. And just to round out the stats for those who are interested, we used a total of 100.8 uh, kilowatt hours for our hot water in the month of June, and we charged our EV um, using 72 kilowatt hours. So not absolutely loads, but uh, that was because um, we took our petrol car on holiday, so we didn't have to charge the, uh, the EV during that week. So once again, this is the chart that shows the um, energy exported and imported from the um, octopus meter. And you can see um, what I've done is I've binned it up into the half hourly chunks there and um, split it um, positive and negative. So uh, import is on the negative axis and um, export is on the positive axis. And you can see I've also shown the, uh, the flux tariffs uh, for June as well. Um, import is negative here and export is positive. So you can see we um, did all of our importing during the flux uh, off-peak period. Um, so that's heating the hot water and charging the battery and the uh, our EV. And then exporting happened during the day just when there was excess solar. So what happened in this period here, this, this will be when the sun is topping up the, the battery back up to 100% from roughly 80% when we, uh, at the time it finished uh, charging during that uh, off-peak period. And uh, so this bit you won't see anything because obviously the battery is balancing the grid and getting charged up by um, uh, by the solar. And then once there's excess solar, that starts to export during this period here. And you can see I'm ex force exporting the battery for two hours uh, during um, the flux peak period. Um, now, if I compare that to um, to the May chart, you can see uh, this is uh, was only one hour roughly that I was doing during May. Um, and but otherwise, it's pretty similar. Just shifting a little bit more into that. Um, uh, peak export period there just to see how that um, that affects the earnings so uh, with all that out of the way let me show you what the earnings were and uh, and the and the savings for the month of june so before i show you the financial side of things um, one thing that some people might be interested in is how much we used our air conditioning um, our air to air heat pump system uh, for cooling in june and uh, I, what i'll do is i'll throw up a little screenshot now of um, of our uh, smart plug data that's plugged into our two um, outside uh, air conditioning um, units and uh, you can see um, that typically the um, the units run at about half a kilowatt hour per day um, just running on um, uh, standby mode uh, and you can see actually we only used the air conditioning for a few days in the middle of June when it got pretty warm uh, and uh, the use was very very low so um, in total you can see that uh, that we consumed 21.21 uh, kilowatt hours um, during um, the month of June um, but most of that was was actually standby mode so the actual cooling side of it that we actually used um, on top of the the standby was actually only 6.2 kilowatt hours so very very little um, basically when it got above about 25 degrees I would just stick the air conditioning on in the office uh, you can see there's the unit uh, there if I can uh, angle my finger correctly um, and uh, that just kept the kept the room at a comfortable sort of 23 24 degrees which um, I find okay for working if it gets much hotter than that I find it very uncomfortable uh, and then we were just using it in the lounge in the evening just to keep uh, keep cool um, while we chilled out a bit um, so yeah we were pretty sparing with the uh, with the use of the AC system um, so it didn't really um, impact our total um, consumption that much um, so yeah let me show you what the, uh, the consumption what uh, the, the actual um, what it cost us to uh, to import the energy um, uh, that we used during June and uh, we can see that we actually spent about 73 pounds and 10 pence on all of that import and all that stuff happened during the um, the off-peak period of course um, but we exported um, 218 pounds worth of, uh, of energy which is um, amazing really um, so this is uh, a bit more than than we were uh, that we were able to export in in May we, um, because of that extra hour that I added from the um, the forced export of the of the battery um, but if you add the standing charge onto both of those um, uh, totals that means uh, so we so we add 73 pounds um, minus 218 pounds and add 15 pounds 70 and that gives us a total of minus 129 pounds 31 pence so uh, Octopus owes us 100, nearly 130 pounds for the month of June, which is uh, pretty incredible. So then, what I've done is I've um, I've used my uh, my spreadsheet. If you if you want to grab that spreadsheet, take a look at, at the video. I'm going to put a link to the video up there that shows the uh, the template spreadsheet that I use to process my Octopus data. Uh, and what I've done is I've calculated. Um, 
what we would have uh, used if we didn't have the solar and the battery system. So basically I've, I've taken out the, um, the hot water because we would have used gas for that. And I've taken out the EV because let's assume uh, the alternative would be um, uh, some sort of internal combustion engine car, like we got rid of, our, we replaced our Jazz with a with a Fiat 500e. Um, so we would have had to spend petrol on that instead. Uh, so I've I've taken out the the electricity we used to, for charging the the car, and we've, I've taken out the electricity we used for heating the hot water, um, and I've also taken out the electricity we um, we imported into the battery and then exported, force exported that we wouldn't have otherwise done. Basically, so. Um, Anything that involved the battery system or solar, I've tried to subtract it away from the total consumption. And what we what that's left us with uh, is um, uh, if all of that st all of our normal daily usage, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, if that had come uh, from the standard flexible tariff from Octopus, that would have cost us sixty eight pounds and thirty one pence. Um, and then, of course, we would have needed gas to heat our hot water, which would have amounted to twenty eight pounds and twenty one pence. And then the car, if we were running um, our Honda Jazz from previously, uh, doing the same number of miles as we did in the uh, in the Fiat 500e, that would have cost us 36 pounds and 66 pence in petrol. So, in order to make uh, to calculate the total savings, we need to take our total electricity cost, which is minus 129 pounds 31 pence, and then also add on to that. Um, the um, the gas and the electricity and the petrol that we would have spent if we didn't have all of all of the equipment and the electric vehicle, and if you add all that up together, that gives us a total saving of two hundred and sixty two pounds and forty nine pence for the month of June, which is a little bit more um, than I reported for May last year. Uh, sorry for for my for May last month. Um, in fact, what I've done is I've gone back and I've um, uh, I've redone the calculation because I, I I made a very small mistake in the the calculation for for May. And in fact, um, having done that redone that calculation, um, I think the savings for May were more like two hundred and eighty five pounds. Uh, so pretty similar overall. Um, but don't forget that we um, we were away for uh, the last week in June, so our electricity usage was a lot lower. Obviously, we weren't using the hot water as much um, and and all of that stuff, and we weren't charging the car and, and everything else. Um, but uh, um, uh, I think pr because we were able to basically export a lot more during that uh, peak period, um, our electricity export earnings were higher than they were in May, and that increased the um, the savings part of that because um, the more you use, the higher your savings are, if that makes sense, because um, obviously we're able to use um, the solar to cover our use. Um, so if we'd actually used more energy, then the savings would have been higher. One of those weird, one of those weird things that happens when you uh, when you have solar. Um, but there you go. I'm pretty pleased with um, with that uh, saving of uh, 262 pounds in June. Um, I'm going to see how it goes uh, in July because um, I'm, uh, things have have changed very slightly with uh, with an update that's happened to the um, the Gen 2 inverters that like that we've got the the, the Gen 2 hybrid five kilowatt um, inverter from Give Energy and a and a, uh, a new firmware update appeared a, a few days ago. So I've uh, I've uh, installed that and that's very subtly changed the behavior. Um, I'm going to do a separate video about that, but I'm wondering how that's going to change um, things for uh, for July. But let's see how that goes. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Um, if you want to subscribe for more of these sorts of videos and also other um, news about uh, Give Energy and um, other stuff that's going on in our in our lives, the, in our system, uh, then please hit that subscribe button. Uh, and otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.